Increasingly, we're a single society. More and more people are living alone. Many choose to stay single, are quite happy being fancy free. But a heck of a lot aren't. Like Bridget Jones in the movie, they're on the prowl, desperately seeking that someone special. And it seems, these days, in fact, as well as fiction, the perfect mate is a rare bird indeed. I haven't met one decent guy since I've been in Australia in three years. I just meet loser after loser after loser after loser. And we're constantly thinking we're going to meet Mr. Right. We might be excited for an hour or two. You know, but then it all comes crashing down. Sometimes I feel so insecure. <laughs> nice to meet you. Today could be Julia Tim's lucky day. She's single, 31, and so far, unlucky in love. Absolutely terrible. In terms of my love life, if I was putting it on a scale of 1 to 10, it's, uh, say, minus 10. It's, it's a disaster. It's a t titanic of a disaster. I've been single now for four whole years, and it feels longer, to be honest. Wow, well, put the harness on. <laughs> Looking sexy. <laughs> Julia's taking the plunge with 30-year-old Andrew O'Rourke. They won this date in a Sydney Morning Herald dating competition. And as they prepare to jump, the nerves of their first date seem to pale next to fear for their lives. Julia and Andrew are not alone. There's a singles phenomenon in Australia today, but there are now more unattached people than ever before. At last count, it was 4.8 million, nearly a quarter of our population. The single scene today is an epidemic of massive proportions and while the explosion gets bigger, there is this relentless pursuit of love from those that want it and don't understand why they don't have it. Sue Osler is an author and relationship coach. I think it's such a confusing time for us from the point of view that we've got so much choice, our choices are dizzying. It looks like a soft landing for Julia and Andrew's first date. <laughs> but it's too early to be too optimistic, as most singles these days have high expectations. <laughs> Five beautiful women in front of me. Why are you all single? Do you know the answer? I don't need to be in a relationship for the sake of it. Uh, but if I met someone that I had a connection with, then I'd be quite happy to be in a relationship. I'm having so much fun and I am not willing to settle for anything less than the one. <laughs> Is he out there somewhere? He's definitely out <laughs> there. <laughs> I don't want to just settle for anyone. I want to make sure that when I get married, when I stand next to the woman at the altar, that she's the right one. And if I can't have that, then I, I think really I couldn't be true to myself. I couldn't be honest. Yeah, we're just not commitment phobic. We're just commitment phobic to the wrong person in the end. I'm just looking for someone who my mother approves of. <laughs> <laughs> Julia works at 60 Minutes. She's attractive, bright, ambitious, and unhappily single. But not through lack of trying. <laughs> like, I'm having a date probably once every two weeks, once a week, once every two weeks. And how are you finding those dates? Not very well so far. You know, it's been it's just like I'm going for the biggest drought in the whole world. I suppose the expectation is that you're hopping to bed together, but. <laughs> But for Julia, despite signs to the contrary, the drought is not about to end with Andrew. It just wasn't, wasn't there for me. That chemistry? That chemistry just didn't happen, unfortunately. Do you think it was mutual? Uh, no. Oh. I didn't at the time, anyway. I suspect it is now. Uh, she wasn't entirely happy. But... That's the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. I liked Andrew and he went wrong. Third date, all went wrong.
And I remember just thinking in the morning, another one bites the dust. Again. Again. And, um... Um, why it happened? Well, he has ex-girlfriend issues. He said there was no X factor there, no chemistry. I think that's bullshit. I don't believe that for a second. Um, I think that's just an excuse for his issues. Lord, it don't leave me <laughs> Nowadays, to help singles increase the odds of meeting that elusive perfect partner, a whole industry has sprung up the booming and very lucrative singles industry. Internationally, it's, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, um, and that's happened very, very quickly. Justin Parfit runs a speed dating service. It's like an adult version of musical chairs, where in one night you date ten people for eight minutes each. You just know that everyone there is going to be about your age and that they're interested in meeting you too. It's just a great way of cutting through all the all the crap, really. Everybody, now it's break time. I'm here to uh, potentially, potentially meet um, someone special. But um, yeah, let me look at your card. Have you met anyone right. special so far? Uh, I have actually a couple. Yeah. So you like Kerry? You go like to Kerry? Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to ask her out? Um, I will ask her out. Yeah. If she ticks me, I mean, if she doesn't tick me, there's no hope. Now, can I have a look at your card? Yeah, sure. So I've met someone who really, really likes you. Really? Oh dear. <laughs> you've put a yes, but you've, you've written... Smart. Do you like Ben? No, he's a bit of a smart. He said he was here to meet someone special. Are you... I don't think I'm quite at that level of desperation yet. For those who do score well, the hard part is perhaps yet to come. Navigating the complexities of modern dating. Guys are confused about what to do. Like, guys are confused about whether to pay for the bill or whether to put their arm around or whether to pay for the cab or open the door or... And, and back when our parents were married, it was just so simple. Well, set me straight. What should a man do? They should pay for the bill. <laughs> no, at least for the first time. time. I disagree. At least for the first time. Really? I disagree. I, I definitely think. I always offer to pay my half. What about simple things like opening the car door? That is so romantic. Like yeah. That is so nice. Like I think that those things still apply now. The single women are telling me that what they want, flowers, you to open the door, and some old traditional romance. Yeah, but you give them that and then they take it, take it for granted. No, I women are too choosy. Oh. <laughs> women, actually, women have become the hunter, hunters now, whereas before they used to be there and you know, guys used to go out and pick girls up. Now it's the other way around. There's a lot of guys out there that try and pick up and if they don't get it, they don't want to have anything to do yeah, with you. I find some nights it's just you just want easy sex and other times you're looking for somebody that you want somebody to spend a bit more time with. And Daryl, that's one of the big complaints from women is that guys are just out there hunting for sex. And, and they girls don't do it them. too. Yeah. Really? Yeah, if they're telling you they're not, they're lying, I tell you. Bring your baggage too. What the hell? We all have it. Oh my God. These days, meeting in cyberspace is one of the most popular ways of non-traditional dating. And more than one million Australians are doing it. Check it out. Like 30-year-old Rob Shield, who regularly uses internet dating. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kate. Today, he's meeting Shan. Too bad. I'm, like, I'm actually a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, <laughs> I try not to let it show. <laughs> okay. Right. I like to uh, just keep it short and sweet. Go for a coffee. I'll give you a call. All right. See you, bye. See ya. She was very tall, a lot taller than I thought she would be. Was there any chemistry? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Next coffee is with Lara. Hello. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Rob's learned that not everyone tells the truth when they're pitching themselves for a potential date. You may meet up with a girl that looks entirely different than, than what her profile suggests. And, and that has happened to me, uh, where I've turned up to meet someone for a coffee and uh, she certainly uh, obviously put on a few pounds very quickly or uh, 
you know, she's basically just lied about her appearance. How do you handle that? I went to the bathroom and I never went back because I didn't want to upset her face to face. So I thought she'd get the message if I sort of left and didn't come back. Check it out. Yeah. Hi, Hi Catherine, how are you? Life is slow nice to meet you. Yeah. Did you like her? Yes, I liked her. Chemistry? Nice. No chemistry, but nice person, yeah. Move on to the next coffee. Yes. <laughs> Good looking guy, a little bit arrogant. Um, and a little bit too short for my liking, actually. In her manhunt, Julia also uses the internet. Today, her date is with Greg. Hi. If I could have the total package, tall, dark, handsome, um, clever, sensitive and lovely, well, well and good. I doubt it's going to happen, though. Instead of tall, dark and handsome, we could go kind of shortish, dark and handsome. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, mate. Will you go out on another date with Julia? Uh, if she's interested, yes, I'd love to. You'll make the phone call? I'll make the phone call. I've just got to get the phone number. He looked like he played a lot of golf. What do you mean by that? <laughs> he had a nice polo neck on. Doesn't fit your checklist of what you want? He was quite smart, but he looked a bit like my dad, really. Is it maybe Aussie men? Do you, do you think you need to go back to England? <laughs> I was dating an English guy this year and he was just as bad, to be honest, so... Well, maybe you need to go to another country. You've done England, you've done Australia. <laughs> I've been through Asia and that didn't work. Dear, uh, oh dear. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe I have to look at myself. It's raining men. It's raining men. One thing Julia doesn't need to doubt is her determination. The next one could always be yeah. the one. Hey, Julia. <laughs> next up, Murray. I think women are exceptionally um, picky and shallow. The types of questions you get asked in that opening five minutes when you're getting to, someone, to know someone. What do you do? Where do you live? And those sorts of questions which they're trying to put you up in a box straight away and basically address you as, is this person a mate potential? Do you feel you're being interviewed, checked out, and if you don't meet the requirements, they move on? Exactly. Yeah. What did you think of Murray? I don't think there was an instant attraction, but I like him. He's nice. He's, you know, the right age. He's good looking. He's got a nice build. He's got a good job. He's got a house. So he's obviously quite stable. Jeez, you checked him out. <laughs> These are important questions I have to find out. <laughs> Chemistry? I think there's a little bit of chemistry, but we'll, we'll wait and see. I'll we have to keep you posted. Which way? Your way or her way? I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think it was both ways. If the pursuit of love is a lot more complicated these days, one thing has stayed the same. What we ultimately want. I think that ultimately everybody wants the, the, the fit meshing into somebody else's life, somebody that you're in love with, somebody that you can see yourself spending yeah. the rest of your life with. I think deep down inside we all long for those nice cuddles and the love and affection and the attention and that's what we miss and crave in the end. I was watching a movie the other day and Jack Nicholson was saying, I'm 63 years old and I've just experienced love and then he'd go, there's hope for me yet. <laughs> I've kind of maybe got some kind of hope of meeting someone out there. You know, you, you've got absolute degenerates that find partners. Um, but I can't find one. Should I be calling you Bridget Jones? <laughs> I think I'm worse than Bridget Jones. Think about Bridget Jones. She's get, she gets Colin Firth and Hugh Grant. What do I get? Nutcases and losers. Nah, she's far better off than me. Bridget Jones, she's lucky.